The Thankless Muse by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The muses ring my bell and run away. I spy you, rogues, behind the evergreen. You, wild thalley, a romper in the hay. And you, terpsichore, you long-legged queen. When I was young, you used to come and stay. But now that I grow older, tis well seen what tricks ye put upon me. Well a day. How many a summer evening have ye been sitting about my doorstep, feigned to sing and tell old tales, while through the fragrant dark burned the large planets, throbbed and brooding sound of crickets, and the tree toads ceaseless ring, and in the meads the firefly lit her spark, where from my threshold sank the veil profound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blue Roses of Academus by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. So late and long the shadows lie under the quadrangle wall. From such a narrow strip of sky, so scant an hour the sunbeams fall. They hardly come to touch at all this cool sequestered corner, where beside the chapel belfry tall I cultivate my small parterre poor sickly blooms of academe recluses of the college close where none like pallor would beseem the violet better than the rose there's not a bud among you blows with scent or hue to lure the bee only the thorn that on you grows only the thorn grows heartily pale cloisterers have you lost so soon the way to blush do you forget how once beneath the enamoured moon you climbed against the parapet to touch the breast of Juliet, warm with a kiss, wet with a tear, in gardens of the Capulet? Far south, my flowers, not here, not here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Winds of Dawn by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Drew Conway, twenty seventh of November, two thousand and sixteen, Kent. Whither do ye blow? For now the moon is low. Whence is it that you come? And where is it you go? All night the air was still, the cricket's song was shrill. But now there runs a hum, and rustling through the trees, a breath of coolness wakes, as on Canadian lakes, and on Atlantic seas, and each high alpine lawn, begin the winds of dawn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anacreontic by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I would not be a voyager on the windy seas. More sweet to me this bank where crickets chirp and bees buzz drowsy sunshine minstrelsies. I would not bide on lonely heights where shepherds dwell. At twilight tide, the sounds that from the valley swell, soft breathing lute and herdsman's bell are sweeter far than music of cold mountain rills the evening star wakes love and song below but chills with mist and breeze the gloomy hills i would not woo some storm-browed juno queenly fair soft eyes of blue and sudden blushes unaware do not net my heart in silken snare i do not love the eyrie but low woodland nest of cushat dove not wind but calm not toil but rest and sleep in grassy meadows breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain bumblebee by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent 
As I lay yonder in tall grass, a drunken bumblebee went past, delirious with honey toddy. The golden sash about his body could scarce keep in his swollen belly, distent with honey suckle jelly. Rose liquor and the sweet pea wine had filled his soul with song divine. Deep had he drunk the warm night through, his hairy thighs were wet with dew. Full many an antic he had played, while the world went round through sleep and shade. Of had he lit with thirsty lip, some flowers cup nectared sweets to sip. When on smooth petals he would slip, or over tangled stamens trip and headlong in the pollen rolled, crawl out quite dusted over with gold. Or else his heavy feet would stumble against some bud and down he'd tumble amongst the grass, there lie and grumble. In low soft bass, poor maudlin bumble, with tipsy hum on sleepy wing, he buzzed a glee, a bacchic thing, which, wandering strangely in the moon, he learned from grigs that sing in June. Unknown to sober bees who dwell through their dark hours in waxen cell, when south wind floated him away, the music of the summer day lost something, sure it was a pain, to miss that dainty starlight strain. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Water Lilies at Sunset by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Mine eyes have seen when once at sunset hour White lily flocks that edged a lonely lake All rose and sank upon the lifting swell that swayed their long stems lazily and lapped their floating pads and stirred among the leaves and when the sun from western gates of day poured coloured flames they kissed to ruddy shame so blushed through snowy petals that they glowed like roses morning blown in dewy bowers when garden walks lie dark with early shade that so their perfumed chalices were brimmed with liquid glory till they overflowed and spilled rich lights and purple shadows out that splashed the pool with gold and stained its waves in tints of violet and ruby blooms and when the flashing gem that lit the day dropped in its far blue casket of the hills the rainbow paintings faded from the mirror the wine-dark shades grew black the gilding dimmed while paling slow through tender amber hues the crimsoned lilies blanched to coldest white and wanly shivered in the evening breeze. When twilight closed, the earliest dewdrops fell, all frosty chill, deep down their golden hearts. They shrank at that still touch, as maidens shrink, when love's first footstep frights with sweet alarms the untrod wildness of their virgin breasts. Then shut their ivory cups, and dipping low their folded beauties in the gloomy wave, they nodded drowsily and heaved in sleep, but sweeter far than summer dreams at dawn. Their mingled breaths from out the darkness stole across the silent lake, the winding shores, the shadowy hills that rose in lawny slopes, the marsh among whose reeds the wild fowl screamed, the dusky woodlands where the night came down. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Between the Flowers by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org By Joshua Urianza An open door and doorsteps wide With pillared vines on either side And terrace flowers, stair over stair Standing in pots of earthenware Where stiff processions filed around Black on the smooth sienna ground Two prison bulbs now blossom there which in moisty hot house air lay winter long in patient rows, glass snugly in from Christmas snows, 
tuberoses with white waxy gems in bunches on their reed like stems. Their fragrance forced by art too soon to mingle with the sweets of June. So breathes the thin blue smoke that steals from the ashes of the gilt pastilles. Burn slowly as the brazier swings in dim saloons of eastern kings. I saw the kala's arching cup with yellow spatics standing up, its liquid scents to stir and mix the golden mist of toddy sticks. Roses in purple for trusa drops, camillas which the gardener crops, to make the sickening wreaths that lie on coffins when our loved ones die. These all and many more were there, monsters and glad foras rare. With tropical broad leaves grown rank, drink in the waters of the tank, wherein the lotus lilies bathe, all curious swarms of spur and spade. Pitcher and sack and cactus thorn, there in the fresh New England morn. But where the sun came colored through, translucent petals wet with dew, the interspace was carpeted with oriole lights and nodes of red orange and blue and violet that wove strange figures as they met of airier tissue brighter blooms than tumble from the persian looms so at the pontiff's feast they tell from the board's edge the goblet fell spilled from its throat the purple tide and stained the pavement far and wide such steps why sheba trod upon up to the throne of solomon so bright the angel crowded steep, which Israel's vision scaled in sleep. What one is she whose feet shall dare tread that illuminated stair? Like Sheba, queen, the angels fair, oh listen in the morning air. The blossoms all are hanging still, the queen is standing on the sill. No Sheba she, her virgin zone claims her royalty alone such royalty the lion's own yet all too cheap the pattern stone that paves king's palaces to fill the pressures of her gaiter's hill the girlish grace that lit her face made sunshine in a dusky place the old silk hood demurring quaint wherein she seemed an altar saint Fresh tinted through in setting gold, of dingy carving and tarnished gold. Her eyes, the candles in that shrine, making Madonna's face to shine. Lingering I pass, but evermore, abide with me the open door. The doorsteps wide, the flowers that stand, in brilliant ranks on either hand. The two white pillars and the vine, a bittersweet and lush wood vine. And from my weary paths, as far as Sheba or the angels are, between upon the wooden sill, thou queen of hearts, art standing still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As You Like It by Henry Abiers Read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Urianza. Here while I read, the light forsakes the pain. Metaphorsis of the twilight gray. Into green azels of Epping or Ardeen, the level lines of Prince stretch far away. The book leaves whisper like the forest leaves, a smell of ancient woods, a breeze of morn. A breath of violets from the mossy paths, and hark, the voice of hounds, the royal horn, which muffled in the ferny coverts deep, utters the three sweet notes that sound recall, as riding two by two between the oaks, come on the paladins and ladies all. The court will rest from chase in this smooth glade, that slopes to meet yon little rushy stream. Wherein the shallows nod the arrowheads, and the blue flower de luce banners gleam. The gamekeepers are coupling of the hounds, 
The pages hang bright scarfs upon the boats. The new slain quarry lies upon the turf. Whereon, but now he with the hurt did browse. The silk pavilion shines among the trees. The mighty pasties and the flag on strong. Give cheer to the dear heart of many a knight, and many a dame whose beauty lives in song. Meanwhile, a stagging improvised and rude rises whereon the maskers and mimes play for their sport a pleasant interlude, fantastic, gallant, pointing at the times. Their green room is the wide midsummer wood. Down some far winding gallery the deer. The dappled dead head of that sylvan shell starts as the distant ranting strikes his ear. They use no traverses nor painted screen to help along their naked outdoor wit. Only the forest lends its leafy scene, yet wonderfully well they please the pit. The plaudits echo through the wide parquet, where the fair audience upon the grass. Each night beside his lady love is set, while overhead the merry winds do pass. The little river murmurs in its reeds, and somewhere in the verdurous solitude, the wood thrush drops a cool contralto note, an orchestra well tuned unto their mood. As runs the play, so runs the afternoon. The curtain and the sun fall side by side. The epilogue is spoke. The twilight come, then homeward through the darkening glades they ride. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old City by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. The Old City ancient city down thy street minstrels make their music sweet sound of bells is on the air fountains sing in every square where from dawn to shut of day maidens walk and children play and at night when all are gone the waters in the dark sing on till the moonrise and the breeze whiten the horse chestnut trees cool thou liest leisured slow on the plains of long ago and unvexed of fretful trades through thy rich and dim arcades overlooking lands below terraced to thy green plateau dear old city it is long since i heard thy minstrel's song since i heard thy church bells deep since i watched thy fountains leap yet whichever way i turn still i see the sunset burn at the ending of the street where the chestnut branches meet where between the gay bazaars maidens walk with eyes like stars and the slippered merchants go on the pavements to and fro upland winds blow through my sleep moonrise glimmers what a sleep till awakening thou dost seem like a city of a dream like a city of the air builded high aloof and fair such as childhood used to know on the plains of long ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain amethyst by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by larry wilson not the green eaves of our young woods alone shelter new violets by the spring rains kissed in the hard quartz by some old april sown blossoms time's flower the steadfast amethyst here's pansy there for thoughts weak thoughts though fair june sees their opening june their swift decay but those stone virgins stand for thoughts more rare whose patient crystals colored day by day might i so cut my flowers within the rock and prison there their sweet escaping breath 
their petals then the winter's frost should mock and only time's slow chisel work their death if out of those embedded purple blooms were quarried cups to hold the purple wine greek drinkers thought the glorious maddening fumes were cooled with radiance of that gem divine might i so wed the crystal and the grape passion's red heart and plastic arts endeavour delirium should take on immortal shape dancing and blushing in strong rock for ever end of poem this recording is in the public domain katie did by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent in a windy treetop sitting singing at the fall of dew katie watched the bats a flitting while the twilight's curtains drew close around her till she only saw the branches and the sky rocking late and rocking lonely anchored on the darkness high and the song that she was singing in the windy treetop swinging were well, under the tree under the tree the fox is digging a pit for me when the early stars were sparkling overhead and down below fireflies twinkled through the darkling thickets she had heard footsteps go voice of her false lover speaking laughing to his sweetheart new half my heart for thee unbreaking did not katie love me true then no longer was she singing but through all the wood kept ringing katie did katie did katie did love thee and the fox is digging a grave for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Narcissus by Henry A. Beers Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Where the black hemlock slants athwart the stream He came to bathe the sun's pursuing beam laid a warm hand upon him as he stood naked while noonday silence filled the wood holding the boughs o'erhead with cautious foot he felt his way along the mossy root that edged the brimming pool then paused and dreamed half like a dryad of the tree he seemed half like the naiad of the stream below suspended there between the water's flow and the green treetop world the lovesick air coaxing with softest touch his body fair a little longer yet to be content outside of its own crystal element and he still lingering at the brink looked down and marked the sunshine fleck with gold the brown and sandy floor which paved that woodland pool but then within the shadows deep and cool which the close hemlocks on the surface made two eyes met his yet darker than that shade and shining through the watery foliage dim two white and slender arms reached up to him comest thou again now all the woods are still fair shape nor even echo from the hill calls her narcissus would her voice were thine dear speechless image and could answer mine her i but hear and thee i may but see yet echo thou art happy unto me for though thyself art but a voice sad maid thy love the substance is 
and my love shade alas for never may i kiss those dumb sweet lips nor ever hope to come into that shadow world that lies somewhere somewhere between the water and the air alas for never shall i clasp that form that mocks me yonder seeming firm and warm but if i leap to its embrace the cold and yielding flood is all my arms enfold all creatures else save only me can share my beauties be it but to stroke my hair or hold my hand in theirs or hear me speak the village wives will laugh and clap my cheek the forest nymphs will beg me for a kiss to make me blush or hide themselves by this clear brook to see me bathe but i must pine loving not me but this dear ghost of mine then bending down the boughs until they dipped their broad green fronds into the wave he slipped and floating breast high from the branches hung his body with the current idly swung and ever and anon he caught the gleam of a white shoulder swimming in the stream pressed close to his and two young eyes of black under the dimpling surface answered back his own just out of kissing distance then the vain and passionate longing came again still baffled still renewed he loosed his hold upon the boughs and strove once more to fold to his embrace that fine unbodied shape but the quick apparition made escape and once again his empty arms took in only the water and the shadows thin thus every day when noon lay bright and hot on all the plains there came to this cool spot under the hemlocks by the deepening brook narcissus phoebus darling there to look and pour upon his picture in the flood till once a peeping dryad of the wood tracking his steps along the slender path which he between the tree trunks trodden hath misses the boy on whom her amorous eyes were wont to feed but where he stood she spies a new-made yellow flower that still doth seem to woo his own pale reflex in the stream whom phoebus kisses when the woods are still and only ceaseless echo from the hill unprompted cries narcissus end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nunc Dumnitzis by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org, by Joshua Urianza. Highlands of Navasink, by the blue ocean's brink, let your bases drink deep of the sea. Tide that comes flooding up, fill me a stirrup cup, pledge me a parting sup, now I go free. Wall palisades, I know were greener glades. Deeper glens, darker shades, hemlock and pine. Far toward the morning lie, under a bluer sky, lifted by cliffs as high, haunts that are mine. Marshes of Havkinsack, see, I am going back, where the Quinnipiac winds to the bay. Down its long meadow track, piled with myriad stack, where in wide Ruvac, 
camps the salt hay. Spireable trinity, never again to thee, see mark and gold to me as I walk down. Chimes on the upper air, calling in vain to prayer, squandering your music where roars the black town. Bless me once ere I ride off to God's countryside, or in the treetops high, bell free and bell. Tongue of the steeple towers, telling the slow paced hours. Hell, thou still town of ours. Bell done. Farewell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beaver Pond Meadow by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Thou art my dismal swamp, my Everglades. Thou my compagna, where the bison wades through shallow streaming pools and sick air decays. Thou my Serbonian bog art, where o'er leagues of mud, black vomit of the Nile crawls in the sun the myriad crocodile. Or thou my Cambridge, or my Lincoln Fen, shalt be, A lonely land where stilted men stalking across the surface waters go, Casting long shadows, and the creaking low canal barge, Laden with its marshy hay, disturbs the stagnant ditches twice a day. Thou hast thy crocodiles. On rotten logs afloat the turtle swarm and bask. The frogs, when come the pale, cold twilights of the spring, like distant sleigh bells through the meadows ring the schoolboy comes on holidays to take the muskrat in its hole or kill the snake or fish for bullheads in the pond at night the hog snout swollen corpse with belly white i find upon the footways through the sedge trodden by tramps along the water's edge not thine the breath of the salt marsh below where the when the tide is out the mowers go shearing the oozy plain that reeks with brine more tonic than the incense of the pine thou art the sink of all uncleanliness a drain for slaughter pens a wilderness of trenches pockets quagmires bogs where rank the poison sumac grows and in the tank the water standeth over black and deep greened o'er with scum foul pottages that steep and brew in that dark broth at night distill malarious fogs bringing the fever chill yet grislier horrors thy recesses hold the murdered peddler's body five days old among the yellow lily pads was found in yonder pond the new-born babe lay drowned and throttled on the bottom of this moat near where the negro hermit keeps his boat whose wigwam stands beside the swamp whose meals it furnishes fat pouts and mud-spawned eels even so thou hast a kind of beauty wild unwholesome thou the suburbs outcast child behind whose grimy skin and matted hair warm nature works and makes her creature fair summer has wrought a blue and silver border of iris flags and flowers in triple order of white arrowhead round beaver pond and o'er the milkweeds in the swamp beyond tangled the daughter's amber-colored threads in every foss the bladderwort's bright heads like orange helmets on the surface show richer surprises still thou hast i know the ways that to thy penetralia lead where in black bogs the sundew's sticky bead and snares young insects and that rosy lass sweet arethusa blushes in the grass once on a sunday when the bells were still following the path under the sandy hill through the old orchard and across the plank that bridges the dead stream past many a rank of cattails midway in the swamp i found a small green mead of dry but spongy ground entrenched about on every side with sluices full to the brim of thick lethean juices the filterings of the marsh with line and hook two little french boys from the trenches took frogs for their sunday's meal and gathered messes of pungent salad from the watercresses a little isle of foreign soil it seemed and listening to their outland talk i dreamed that yonder spire above the elm tops 
calm rose from the village chestnuts of la balm yes many a pretty secret hast thou shown to me o beaver pond walking alone on summer afternoons while yet the swallow skimmed o'er each flaggy plash and gravelly shallow or when september turned the swamps to gold and purple but the year is growing old the golden rod is rusted and the red that streaked october's frosty cheek is dead only the sumac's garnet pom-poms make procession through the melancholy break lo even now the autumnal wind blows cool o'er the ripple the waters of thy pool and red autumnal sunset colors brood where i alone and all too late intrude end of poem this recording is in the public domain high island by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent pleasant it was at shut of day when wind and wave had sunk away to hear as on the rocks we lay the fog bell toll and grimly through the gathering night the horn's dull blare from faulkner's light snuffed out by ghostly fingers white that round it stole somewhere behind its curtain soon the mist grew conscious of a moon no more we heard the diving loon scream from the spray but seated round our driftwood fire watched the red sparks rise higher and higher then wandering into night expire and pass away down the dark wood the pines among a lurid glare and firelight flung so for a while we talked and sung and then to sleep and heard in dreams the lighthouse bell as all night long in solemn swell the tidal waters rose and fell with soundings deep end of poem this recording is in the public domain lotus eating by henry a beers read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk come up once more before mine eyes sweet halcyon days warm summer sea faint orange of the morning skies and dark lined shores upon the lee touched with the sunrise sea and sky all still on memory's canvas lie the scattered isles with india ink dot the wide backgrounds gold and pink unstirring in the sunday calm their profile cedars sharply drawn bold black against the flushing dawn take shape like clumps of tropic palm night shadows still the distance dim ultramarine where oceans brim upholdeth the horizon rim once more in thought we seem to creep by lonely reefs where sea-birds scream ulysses like along the deep borne onward in the ocean stream the sea-floor spreadeth glassy still no breath the idle sail doth fill our oar-blades smite the heavy seas under the world the morning breeze treads with the sun the unknown ways thus steer we o'er the solemn main eating the lotus fruit again dreaming that time forever stays singing where absence is thy sting listening to hear our echoes ring through the far rocks where sirens sing
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mermaid's Glass by Henry A. Beers, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Twas down among the thimble isles that strew for many liquid miles the waters of Long Island Sound. Our yacht lay in a cove around the rocky isles with cedars green and channels winding in between, and here a low black reef was spread, and there a sunken nigger head dimpled the surface of the tide from one tall island's cliffy side we heard the shaggy goats that fed the gulls willed screaming overhead or settled in a snowy flock far out upon the lonely rock which like a pillar seemed to show some drowned acropolis below meanwhile in the warm sea about with many a plunge and jolly shout our crew enjoyed their morning bath the hairy skipper in his wrath lay cursing on the gunwale's rim he loved a dip but could not swim so now and then with plank afloat he'd struggle feebly round the boat and o'er the side climb puffing in scraping wide areas off his skin then lie and sun each hirsute limb once more upon the gunwale's rim and shout with curses unavailing come out there's wind let's do some sailing a palm-leaf hat that here and there bobbed on the water showed him where some venturous swimmer outward bound escaped beyond his voice's sound all heedless of their skipper's call one group fought for the upset yawl the conqueror sat astride the keel and deftly pounded with his heel the hands that clutched his citadel which showed at distance like the shell round which unseen the naiad train sport naked in the middle main myself had drifted far away meanwhile from where the sailboat lay till all unbroken i could hear the waves low whisper in my ear and at the level of mine eye the blue vibrations met the sky sometimes upon my back i lay and watched the clouds while i and they were wafted effortless along sudden i seemed to hear a song yet not a song but some weird strain as though the inarticulate main had found a voice whose human tone interpreted its own dull moan its foamy hiss its surfy roar its gentle lapping on the shore its noise of subterranean waves that grumble in the sea-cliff caves its whish among the drifting miles of gulfweed from the indian isles all all the harmonies were there which ocean makes with earth or air turning i saw a sunken ledge bared by the ebb along whose edge the matted seaweed dripped thereon betwixt the dazzle of the sun and the blue shimmer of the sea i saw or else i seemed to see a mermaid crooning a wild song combing with arm uplifted long the hair that shed its meshes black down the slope whiteness of her back she held a mirror in her hand wherein she viewed sky sea and land her beauty's background and its frame but now as toward the rock i came all suddenly across the glass some startling images seemed to pass for her song rose into a scream over her shoulders one swift gleam of eyes unearthly fell on me and twixt the flashing of the sea and the blind dazzle of the sun i saw the rock but thereupon she sat no longer against the blue only across the reef there flew one snow-white turn and vanished too but coasting that lone island round among the slippery kelp i found a little oval glass that lay upturned and flashing in the ray of the down-looking sun there too with scarce believing eyes i drew and took it captive and while there i rested in the mermaid's lair and felt the merry breeze that blew and watched the sharpies as they flew and snuffed the sea's breath thick with brine and basked me in the sun's warm shine then with my prize i made my way once more to where the sailboat lay i kept the secret and the glass by day across its surface passed the transient shapes of common things which chance within its oval brings but when at night i strive to sound the darkness of its face profound again 
i seem to hear the breeze that curls the waves on summer seas i see the isles with cedars green the channels winding in between the coves with beaches of white sand the reefs where warning spindles stand and through the multitudinous shimmer of waves and sun again the glimmer of eyes unearthly falls on me deep with the mystery of the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain a holiday eclogue by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by caroline a holiday eclogue above first mason tinkerlink tinkerlink hear the trowels ring feel the merry breezes make the scaffold swing see the skimming swallow brush us with her wing go it with your hammers boys time us while we sing below first student see the yellow sparkle of the nectar in the glass and through the cedar branches sparkles blue the sea hear the sweet piano hear the german lass sing freut euch des lebens oh i love i love the free second student i like the canary better look how he swells his throttle he gurgles like musical water that dances and sings in a bottle above second mason do you mind the students down in the grove drinking their wine and beer that's an easy life they lead first mason so do we up here when the weathercock points west and the look-off's clear third mason how's top jim's the boy for work first mason true for you my dear whistles the girl i left behind me below first student see the dutchman on those settees isn't it like the rhine and the old church tower up over the trees kellner noch ein stein third student i'd like to work with those masons there half way up the sky the air is sweet where the pigeons build enter the world is all in their eye second student but love is of the valley the gretchen and the kellner haunt the cheerful levels of the lower story glory in the garret comfort in the cellar i will keep the comfort you may take the glory above first mason look up at the pointers they're drawing close together tis here we get the earliest news of sun and moon and weather we can hear time's pulse are ticking with the whistling weathercock drop your mortar boards my lad it's coming twelve o'clock third mason oh it's hungry that i am with working in the wind but there's a shawl and bonnet below there do you mind it's molly with the dinner pail she's coming in the door faith my belly thinks my throat is cut this half an hour and more the church clock strikes the noon end of poem this recording is in the public domain a memory by henry a beers read for librivox dot org by drew conway twenty seventh of november two thousand and sixteen kent i came across the marsh to-night and though the wind was cold i stayed a moment on the bridge to note the pally gold that lingered on the darkening bay the creek which ran below was frozen dumb the dreary flats were overspread with snow the college bell began to ring and as the north wind blew its distant janglings out to sea i thought dear friend of you and how one warm september day while yet the woods were green we strayed across the happy hills and this wild marsh between. 
the haystacks dotted here and there the water meadows wide the even lines of sluice black were filling with the tide then this salt stream now winter bound fled softly through the sedge retreating from the sparkling sound 